to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by GhostBed.com. Your shirt today, Jabes. You wearing my shirt? Yeah. Alan Keller versus Night Wolves. You're literally wearing me on your shirt. Yeah. It's As your you head every day. On my chest. Mm-hmm. Just the way I like it. <laughs> Just the way I like it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, is my face on you? Um, doing it for reason today. What's the and reason? If, if you're not subscribed to the YouTube show, you should, because you need to see this. <clears throat> the reason I'm doing this today is uh besides your performance as Helen Keller in this Sure. Psychological thriller that sure. I call Helen Keller versus Night Wolves. That I wrote and directed this masterpiece. Robbed. I was robbed that year. Yes, of the Oscar. Mm-hmm. Um, the Joker was the single greatest performance. So you're saying besides my performance in... Helen Keller versus Night Wolves. Okay. Because you had Helen Keller... It's cool. Look, when it's called Helen Keller versus Night Wolves... Sure. The movie's about Helen Keller. Yeah. When the movie's called The Joker, the movie's about The Joker. It wasn't that many other people in there. It was a one people in there. hander. I mean, a full one hander in that one. Holy Dude, shit. It was so good. It was the first time, I think this year, where you and I were like, all right, worth the babysitter, worth the. Worth the whole thing. And I had a thought while I was watching it that when Walking Phoenix is gone, whether he retires dead. or he dies or whatever it may sure. be, because, you know, he's touch and go uh, with that be guy. Dead first, yeah. He'll be dead first before he retires. But when that happens, I don't know who would be able to fill his shoes talent wise and just overall amazingness. Keeping it old school, uh, keeping us guessing as far as who he really is as a person so that when he actually plays a part yeah you aren't thinking about his custody battle with his wife or the like weird instagram that you saw sure. or you're literally just like maybe he's really mentally ill yeah right yeah yeah yeah. or i wonder i just you go you go on the ride with him i think and i think he does it on purpose i think he's smart enough to do it i think he's a weirdo but you have to be to be as fucking talented as he is he is so good I, I think uh, Christian Bale and maybe Tom Hardy match up, but that's about it. They match up in the mysteriousness or the talent? I, yeah, I don't really know much about either of them per- personal life-wise. To be honest with you, I don't think Christian Bale has any social media whatsoever. Right, and I think he's one of the other ones, too, that um, keeps it private so that when he plays a role, you aren't thinking about anything else. Yeah, um, but man, what a performance that I, you can pretty much just go ahead and give him the Oscar after that. I would imagine. Yeah. I don't know how you're going to beat that. Yeah. Um, I mean, the thing, should... the thing that I loved about it personally was zero CGI, no comic book effects, no nothing. It's they just, did a, I mean, tie it in though, which I loved and they, they made did it Gotham like, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, nods gave certain nods to, a comic book without going full, right? They did, but to me, you you could have just said, "Hey, man, this is also like a a dramatic, you know, thriller," and like I'd have been the same about a serial killer, and and you would have been like, "All right, cool." Even if it wasn't the Joker, and it was just a guy who was a clown, right? Mm-hmm. To me, it was a hardcore drama where you're just like, "Man, I don't." I don't know what's going to happen. I was waiting for like the comic booky elements to, to, to pop out and be like, oh, and that never happened. And that was unbelievably refreshing for somebody like me who does not enjoy comic book movies and the dialogue and all that other shit that comes along with a comic book movie. It just seemed like they went against the grain at every single turn in this. Todd Phillips did an amazing, amazing oh, yeah. job. Whoever the costume designer and set designer. Yeah. Uh, crushed it or art department I guess was uh, amazing because it was like New York in the 80s yeah yeah and subtle and the color palettes that they chose Mm -hmm. were amazing I would say top to bottom uh, 
a perfect movie. Pretty close. I, I mean, I... And the only nods that they gave were to the first Keaton Batman. So the ha- the the alley, uh-huh. you know, where the parents get shot yeah, yeah, yeah. and Gotham in general. Uh, other than that, they didn't really go anywhere else with it. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know the comic books that well to make a comment on it of whether or not it was close to a comic book or, or, or whatever it is. But to me, just as a movie as a whole, which is a fantastic film, the crazy thing is, is if he wins for this, right, there was some people bitching online that like, hey, man, can we actually give another Oscar out for the same character? Because Heath Ledger played the Joker as well and won the Oscar. My answer to that is yes, and I'll tell you why. It's a, it's a hard role, and if yes. you fuck it up, Jack then you're Nich- Jared Leto, right? And he went right. through that. Yes, yes. He went and through that, and people Jack Nicholson hated him. famously said, "Do not play that role." I don't know if that's true or not. By the way, I, I don't know if that was a meme or. Uh, I warned him. I uh, warned him. That n- one coming out of the thing. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that's real or not. Yeah, I think he did say that. Maybe. I, yeah. it, to me, it spread right after Heath Ledger died, and it was just like, was this real or was this not? Mm. I don't have the I don't have the answer for that, but um, if if you're that great in a role and you can make people forget, um, not forget, but put on such a unique, different performance than Heath Ledger, mm-hmm. then yes, you deserve that award to me. And those movies were totally different, um, and they're completely different actors. Whereas um, Heath Ledger. I wasn't as big of a fan of his acting as I was and have always been Joaquin Phoenix. So it's just different. I like Heath Ledger, and I think he was great in The Joker, and I thought he deserved the Oscar. Um, But you're right. There's some other movies that were like, eh, hit and miss to me, whereas Joaquin Phoenix is always... Every single one. I know. You can't name one Always one of the best. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Whether or not he lives long, I don't know. We had a, you and I had a discussion. Like the only time that I met him was he was dating somebody, a friend of mine, of somebody that I was dating in fuck man, I think it was like oh eight, oh nine, somewhere in there. Um, he looked like he was going to die. I mean, he right. was fifty, sixty pounds overweight, yeah, smoking inside, chain smoking over and over again, drugs that you name it. And uh, I was like, eh, that guy's definitely going to die. And then that movie came out a couple years afterwards. I'm not really here or I'm already gone where he was the, the fake rapper. Yeah. I go through this every time. Right. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I, I thought if you would ask me then after that movie. Yeah. That he's dead. Yeah, definitely. He's dead. The fact that not only did he live through that career wise and then went on to, to make this amazing film yeah. is unbelievable. It's the same thing we always talk about. The talent usually wins out yeah. versus whoever you are as a person. Yeah. Um, you know, we talked about Shia LaBeouf a couple of weeks ago in the same way, and it was just like, man. Uh, but I, d- I did not think he was going to come back after that movie. What is it? I wish I was here. Uh, I don't know. That, does that computer work? No. No. No, it does not. Um, Jamie, look up that movie, Joaquin Phoenix. Just, all you have to do is IMDb, Joaquin Phoenix. Um, I'm still here. There it is. I'm still here. I thought he was for real going to die after that movie. Do everything. Um, yeah. You. <laughs> we well, need Alec back. Where's Alec? Um, um, well, the other thing about this movie, too, that made I really started thinking about mental illness. Because that's more what it's about, right? Yeah. And I do think he struggles with that. Oh, yeah. I, look. For sure. And so that's, I guess, another thing that really uh, I loved him in this role is because you go, he knows what this guy's going through. Yeah. I he mean, knows. Like in his, he, it seemed that he brought a lot of his own shit into, into the role, which is uh, amazing. But it made me, God, I felt bad for him. It made me think about mel- mental illness in a different way. When you watch your brother die outside Way. the Viper room and have to call 911 in that 
you know, oh, and you grew they, up in child of God, children of God, children of God, and all that other shit. Like, yeah, dude, he comes by it honestly and has and has every excuse in the world to be. But I'm just saying, uh, yeah, yeah, he knew he knew what this guy was going through for sure, for sure. I think it was easy for him to tap into this role. I'll say that. The other one was uh, there's a friend of mine in LA who goes and sees every single film like the second it comes out. I know who you're talking about. Um, Casey? Yeah, Casey, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he went and saw that um, Renee Zellweger movie about Judy Garland as well. That entire movie is about mental illness as well. And okay. the comments that were coming out of that of this weekend because they both opened this weekend right now, joker broke every record possible and ended up at 93.5 million my prediction was it's uh 124 um it still broke the record but uh right. eh, just a little bit off um he said it is very possible after he watched the judy garland movie that you have two people win best oscar for two roles about mental illness mental illness and he was like, man, they're... I think it's a good thing. Two entirely different films, obviously. Mm -hmm. One's a biopic, and uh, this is the Joker, but he's like, both were lights-out performances, which I don't know how you beat. So we'll see. Um, the good thing about it is, you know, usually the Oscar run ends... You, you've got to get your movie in at least a theater by December 31st. We're here on October 8th now mm -hmm. at this point. Um, there's not going to be too many left. I mean, look, he'll be up against probably Joker-wise. He'll probably be up against Tom Hanks for um, Mr. Rogers. Right. But, um, but you know. Sorry. sorry, Hanks. Well, look, the fact that it's going to be the Joker versus Mr. Rogers is pretty hilarious. Yeah. If, that's what, if that's how the Oscar race shapes up, what do you do? <laughs> What do you do there? You want to talk about two entirely different oh, movies? Oh, God. <laughs> I wonder, when you said you you saw comments about could there can there be another Oscar, I thought you meant, like, can we give out two? Because you have to give one just to Joaquin. That's not fair. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Oh, no. I thought that's what you meant, is, no. like, someone being like, okay, let's just give one to him, get it out of the way, and then we can start looking at other movies do you know what i mean because you can't go against that performance you you, you can, i don't think you can but um you can't I, I look we're calling it now that he wins after that or he should has to uh the only thing that might deter him is it is very very political you have to go out to all of these events for like four months essentially starting in usually starts in november and kiss all these people's asses yeah, golden true. globes all of these parties and like dude you know, even though I've never, ever been close to a goddamn Oscar or a Golden Globe, like, I've attended all of those, and you see what it is really like, and it is, it is like a politician running for office, where oh, yeah. there is just crowds of people around you at these parties, you're talking, meeting, kissing babies, the whole fucking shit, where you're just like, man, that is intense, and there is people that are really great at it, and others that are not. It's like that, uh, Red Mane. Yes, great at it. He was like, great at it, and everybody on those panels who's voting and shit love, loved him, still loves him. And I remember one of my first forays into it was a uh, long, long time ago when I very first moved there was um, Shake a Spear in Love with uh, Gwyneth Paltrow. Oh, yeah. And I remember being at like one of the biggest Oscar parties, and everybody was crowded around her, and she was, had treated it like she was the princess of Monaco and like... Mm -hmm. Talked to everyone, was gracious, and drinking champagne, and you were like, oh, well, shit, she's going to win. Like, I, I remember turning to my buddy, and I was like, this is how this really works. He's like, yep, this is how this works. And I go, oh, well, then she's going to win. Like, everybody loves her at these yeah. fucking parties. Right. And that's exactly what happened. I don't see him wanting to show up and do that. I mean, fuck, he didn't want to do press on the red carpet. They canceled all those press interviews where he didn't have to talk. Again, he said he would show like up and it. take pictures. I don't pictures. think he cares about the awards, to be honest. I don't either. I don't think. He doesn't think. show up. Yeah. Um, he's been nominated three times mm -hmm. for Oscar and nominated pretty much every year for a Golden Globe since 2001. Nominated. Does it, and does it has say not for which movies? won anything. Does it say for which movies on there? Gladiator. Gladiator. Oh, Walk shit. the Line. The Master. Her. 
um, Inherent Vice. I uh, thought he should have won for Walk the Line and Gladiator. The Master? The Master was great. But I, I thought, to me, the Master was Philip Seymour Hoffman. And, like, okay. I, I lean more towards him in that. Okay. Um, but uh, Walk the Line, because Reese Witherspoon won for that. Uh, I thought he was fucking great. And I think it took the two of them to bring out her performance. So I would have given him that. And then Gladiator, dude. Yeah. So that's the thing, though. He has 127 nominations. <laughs> and No way. Zero wins. And you're right. Well, he wins like these random like Austin Film Festival or like. Yeah, of course. Double ACTA or whatever, but not. Golden Globe or Oscar. Um, and I think that's probably why. You're right. He just doesn't play the game. And that's he increasingly probably gets more and more pissed because he doesn't win, even though he had the best fucking performance because he, what, doesn't go to the parties, doesn't smooze with fucking Weinstein. Yeah. So I could see, I mean, you could see getting a little bit pissed. About that, right? And not wanting to show up and being like, I'm fucking here. You're not going to give it to me, but I'm at the table. Yeah. Like, fuck you. I think, because all in all, just looking at that movie, I mean, there's so many nominations I could come out of that. Todd Phillips absolutely deserves it. Um, whether or not he will get nominated for doing so many comedies, usually that's a strike against you. Mm-hmm. Um, Adam McKay, who did all of Anchorman and all those other comedies, he beat it, though, with uh, that... Yeah, the short, the big short. Mm-hmm. And he was able to get nominated for both. So I think Todd Phillips, you could easily give a nominations for best director. And then obviously their art department for recreating that set and everything was phenomenal. Costume. Uh, that makeup. score was really good as well. I could go on and on about how great this, this film was. Well, the soundtrack, yeah. The only negative response, again, that I read from anyone online after this, because I you know, was up pretty late after that looking for stuff for, for today's show. There was some diehard comic book people who were like, quit changing the story or whatever. And I was just like, man, I, for, for someone who is not into that, I was all in on that. I remember turning to you about 20 minutes in and I was like, dude, are you as all in on this as I am? And you were like, yes. Dude, I was in like five minutes in. I, I didn't I know. I was in. Yeah, I still didn't know. And I was like, I am, this was incredible. Um, either way, the reason why we're going on and on about it is I haven't enjoyed seeing a, a film in theaters like that in a very, very long time. So I'm super stoked. Yeah. Um, and it was worth every second of it out. Uh, next up, uh, I want to talk. I want to update everybody on this dish sitch. OK. Um, I bitched about this on this show and I think about on drinking bros with these carriage deals, man, where networks are getting dropped from, you know. Direct TV or Dish or AT and T or whoever you have, Time Warner over these disputes, and they had dropped Fox Sports and the Big Ten Network, which is literally half the reason I have cable. They've already dropped HBO. I feel like, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, look, the Ohio State's in the Big Ten. Um, We were on a primetime network for the the Saturday night game, so I didn't have to worry about that. Anybody else who's a Big Ten fan, though. They, they, they missed that game. They missed uh, their teams probably, except for Michigan, uh, Iowa, which was on primetime as well. But Fox Sports has the baseball playoffs. And I was like, we're in full swing of the baseball playoffs right now. Uh, these are big, big, big games. The, they turned it back on and said they had reached an agreement magically before the New York Yankees game. Uh, hmm. On Sunday, which I find really, really odd. Um, huh. They're Come diehard. On. You know New Yorkers called Absolutely. and raged against the machine and said Absolutely. we will burn our dishes in the middle of the street if we don't get the Yankees on. Obviously. Uh, and the Yankees smash, by the way. Uh, they are one game away from the uh, ALCS, as are the Braves, James. It was uh, not looking good for the Braves. We, we could have swept. We were up that first game 3-1 in the bottom of the eighth and then just uh, shit the bed. But it's 2-1 in ours, 2-0 in yours. And you guys play tonight. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe we do too. So both of these series could be over by the next show. Uh, that would be amazing. But more importantly, if the Yankees win tonight, uh, we will be in New York 
and you will get to see your beloved Yankees in person. That would be amazing. Amazing. To go to the World Series. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then your boys sent us some. Uh, uh, the Bronx Blues. Yeah, they sent him some Savages shirts. Dan's got them at his at his apartment right yeah, now. Yeah, sorry guys, I'm gonna wear them the next one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dan's got them. Or if look, if they win tonight, then we'll save them and wear them to the game. Yes. Yeah, because uh, we want to do a show with those guys up in New York, and I think that would be a blast. Yeah. So, really, really looking forward to it. Uh, tonight's game's on at like eight thirty. You know, I'll be watching every pitch of that because that'll be it. I'm sure, there's a couple people listening that are Yankees fans. There's a so lot. There's a lot of Yankees go to fans that, out there. Go to their site, the Bronx Blue. Mm -hmm. Um, and grab some sweet bespoke Yankees gear. merch, dude. Merch. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm amped about that. So that that's on tonight. And uh, whoo, there's nothing like playoff baseball, especially when your teams are good. Um, man, I was worried about the Braves though. Yankees, I wasn't worried about. No, all right. And not, I was like, eh. Next year. round, I will be against the yeah. Astros, but not right now. I'm okay on that. Uh, I want to get into this Uber thing. Um. There was a producer friend of mine who said, hey, man, uh, I, I would start looking into this helicopter Uber service. And I was like, huh? This seems this seems isn't like it like it's a thing that people can actually do and or pay yeah, for. They were doing it at Coachella last year. They're doing it at Coachella last year. Right. But I the prices were high, I heard. And I don't know and if you it were was going from Uber I, no, or a different company. It was a different was company. And you were going from Uber. L.A. to um, Coachella, Springs which is. Whatever, yeah. yeah, I mean, that's a two hour drive two and a half hour drive mm -hmm. um yes a helicopter would make sense if you're rich enough for something like that right so I, I had kind of offhandedly said hey man i am probably not as rich as you think i am um i, I just cannot drop uber helicopters to places right and he goes well, where are you flying into new york next next week and i said uh laguardia because that's the only we have a tiny airport here it's only what it's six only direct six flight. gates yeah I think. yeah yeah um, and, and it's a direct flight, which is one of the you know other reasons we moved here. So we go to New York a lot for the books and all that other stuff. And um, uh, it's a direct flight. It's super cheap. There's only like literally 28 seats on the flight. It, it is a classic puddle jumper. I think there's one first class seat, just one. And it's off to the side, like dead serious. That's how small these planes <laughs> are. You're a loser if you pay for that. It, yeah. You're a I mean, fucking it, idiot. I think it round trip. It's our... our uh, Direct flight in is like an hour and 20 minutes. I refuse to play, pay first no. class for shit like that. It's ridiculous. Anyway. So anyways, my buddy was like, hey, man, that's, you know, LaGuardia is further than JFK. I, look, I, I know JFK is always the awesome airport to fly into if you can. Um, but it doesn't, we don't go there. So it doesn't really matter for yeah. me. Um, so he goes, look, man, get the fucking Uber helicopter, man. You can get it from LaGuardia into Midtown because that's where we're staying. And because we have podcasts up front and I go, yeah, I think there's more helicopter pads on buildings than there is anywhere else. There is. And I, I saw a lot of them last time I was there and I was shocked by it. And I was like, oh, shit. Um, they appear to be private properties or, you know. Right. Huge thing. Yeah. Like the super expensive high rises that they're yeah, building yeah, now yeah. probably have a helicopter pad on the top. So. He sends me the link and he was like, dude, this will get you in like super fast. Um, so I looked it up and I wanted to, to share this for the audience here. So the price of it was actually from the airport into Midtown was a 205 bucks uh, for the helicopter service. Right. Okay. A cab usually or a cab or an Uber from LaGuardia in usually runs you anywhere from 48 to 65 bucks. Okay. Um, and you're paying an extra hundred and fifty dollars. I dug more into this to see like how user friendly this is. Right. Someone wrote an article and did it, and they said they they so they took it three times, uh, in and out of there, and here was their review okay. of it. They said it was not that sweet. They said, look, total time on the average time to go from the airport to Midtown uh, was fifty five minutes. You had to go somewhere else from the airport to get the helicopter, which makes sense, right? Yeah, you could, the helicopter's not going to be just right outside. No, no, it's not going to be, be curbside. But right outside the plane. So you are going to have to, it looks like a 19-minute car ride, right? Uh, yes. And it's included in the price. You get a 19-minute Uber car ride. Right. And then... To the helicopter. But then they drop you off in Midtown, right? Mm-hmm. 
The problem with that is if it's not where you're staying, right, mm-hmm. and you have all your luggage and all this shit, what do you just take an ele- – like you would have to take an elevator all the way down and then go back out into the streets, catch another cab to wherever – you were really going? It makes more sense to do it not in airport times. It makes more sense to do it if you are like night out, want to roll to Brooklyn or something. Then it does. If you've got a couple people, you split the fucking cost of 150 you know, $200. Right. But if you have bags, if you have, you need the Uber ride to the thing, to the Uber ride back, what? then that sounds like more of a pain in the ass. Yes. But doing it as like a luxury fun thing sounds cool to me. But not ever you it doesn't look like where we stand right now with it. It doesn't look like it's going to be something that will be like convenient and make your life easier no. during like work commute or airport commute right now. Uh, right now, it would just be fun if we had four people that wanted to like go get pizza in Brooklyn or something, right, right from Midtown. That would be cool. I, Other than I that, yes, um, but or you go know, to Jersey real quick and come back or something like this. You're gonna have to get over your fear of helicopter, like flying and stuff like that. Like I don't have a fear of flying. Um, wh- whatever that, like you, I'm sure you don't want motion sickness right before you go get dinner. Right. I don't have a fear of flying. Right. I just my body doesn't meet, allow me to right. do it. So they said that this is super small, by the way. Right. And so they were like, look, you've you've got to you got to be willing to do that as mm-hmm. well from the airport. And yet, look, I, I just like the fastest point from A to B and everything in life. Yeah. The more stops you make, the more problems you could possibly problems have yeah. to happen. So to me, this this makes zero sense to me. Mm-hmm. If you were trying to get to Philadelphia or Newark or Atlantic City from New York, fine. Um, That's what I... Connecticut, I guess. Uh, That's what I think. But to to do it from the airport to So they're saying it's going to be eventually for people like people that we know that live in the nice neighborhoods outside the city and they have to commute in. Uh Uh-huh. Eventually, it will be good for those people that live in the surrounding suburban areas of New York and need to get into town for work. Yeah. I I, I could see that. I could but then where are that. you going in Connecticut or wherever to get on the helicopter? I don't know. I don't know. Because I, I would imagine you have to pull up. Unless it's. You know, like a like a train station. So my, my dad takes uh, in Atlanta. He takes Marta a lot. The, the trains because mm-hmm. they get a train that goes into the airport and that is much much quicker than Atlanta traffic obviously and he's always he, you know he's only packing a little bag so he's not dragging shit around yeah pops in for the weekends and things like that um I've done it with him and that's that's not bad where you're just like all right this is less of an inconvenience or whatever but this to me driving to the helicopter and then trying to get because the helicopter is not going to land where you want it. And yeah, it'd be less money to just make copter payments. Just get yourself your own copter. <laughs> make copter payments every month. Timeshare a copter with, with your buddies? No, just make your copter payments just like a car or anything else yeah. that you do. Probably be like 500 a month. I don't know how much a helicopter is. I've been in them numerous times with uh, Jared, actually. Um, oh, yeah. God damn it, man. He loves to go up in a helicopter. He does. And, and well, he was learning to fly it. I, I don't know if he has enough hours yet or whatever, but uh, he's pretty good. Nah, I will he probably say this. gave up on that just like everything else. I, no. I, surprisingly, Jared was very good. And f- fuck. One time I flew into El Paso, he conned me into going on this helicopter ride. And I was just like, hey, what? I mean, I've just flew into El Paso. And he's like, hey, man, I got to go to this uh, thing to pick up this thing at Harlan's or whatever. And I was like, oh, all right, cool, man. Um, we get there, and he was like, "Ah, oh, man, I forgot to tell you, I was gonna fly the helicopter for like an hour today. Is that cool?" And I was like, "I guess." Forty-five mile an hour winds. Um, he was great at it, sure, and was able to handle that much wind with uh, not that much experience. And so he is good at it, but like, whew, uh, I don't know how much a helicopter is, but they're out there. People, people do own them. 
So maybe, I'm just saying, maybe you could pop down some money on a, on a this, copter. If you're taking this into the city from your nice place in Connecticut daily, yeah. just get yourself a fucking copter yeah. at that point and make your payments. Yeah, make your copter payments. Don't be late on a payment for Ma- you copter Imagine that payments. showing up on your... Uh, 3.2 million for a helicopter. For a 2017 used helicopter, Jamie said. 3.2 million. I think you can get a private jet for cheaper than that. To buy? Yes. My yeah. buddy just bought a used private jet, I think, for But I think 1. the gas 8. for the jet is going to cost yes. way more yeah, 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 yeah. than the helicopter. So once you pay off the copter, yeah. that's pretty much it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not like an ongoing $50,000 a month gas bill. You get a pilot though. You're gonna pay a pilot and shit for the copter. Yeah, I don't. All of this seems super unnecessary to me. And also, I can't justify the copter. What if we had as many copters, Uber copters, in the air as we do Uber drivers, bing banging around the streets? Yeah, you're but gonna that's... get a copter. A copter, two Uber copters are gonna crash into each other. But I think what Jamie just said is what three point two. Yeah, three point two. That kind of eliminates like you know every Tom, but Dick, Uber, and Harry getting Uber a is copter. manufacturing these. So if you look at them, it's an Uber copter. Ah, so it's not gotcha, like gotcha, you gotcha. have your own and then you do ride share. Uber has a certain amount. It's a lot of flights, man. At two oh five to cover. Uh, Oof, that's that's too much for me. I, I don't. I'm not down on a copter, man. No, I if can't it, get down on it, a copter. I'd I think rather it just have adds a driver, like 15 minutes to your trip. Yeah, ultimately. Yeah. So it's like okay, so maybe you're not sitting in traffic for that time, but it's still. I'd rather just have a driver. You remember that time we got stuck in Atlanta, and uh, oh yeah, I was hosting that. I was that about to. Was I was great. about to host a charity event in Birmingham, and they sent us a. Uh, uh, an Uber, one of those stretch, was suburban black, you know, suburban essentially. Mm-hmm. And then that was, cause that was a two hour drive uh, from Atlanta to Birmingham. And uh, it was fucking great. I'd rather just yeah. have a driver, I think. Well, or I just want to be baller enough to get the Uber XL every time. Right. You know, the nice Uber yeah. every time. But the copter for me seems pointless. No, I'm out on the copter. I'm out on the copter. Uh, we got some sponsors though. Shit, we just kept chatting, dude. And Uber Copters is not one of them. No, they're not one of our sponsors, or else I would have flown in today. Because I would have, that, like, imagine? they give you, they give you free flights, obviously, if you're a sponsor, probably, right? <laughs> you fly from our house, or to some help from some from our house to the studio, which is uh, like well, a no, you have to go from drive. copter pad to copter pad, right? And well, then take an Uber here. We put a copter pad in our neighborhood. Mm, we should put one on the roof. Yeah. Of this place. Put it on the roof of this place and then roof to roof, you know? Roof Boom. to roof. Yeah. We'll put a copter on the. I, I'm sure the HOAs would be amped about a copter on a roof. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah like, hey, yeah, did you yeah, just put a yeah, helicopter yeah, pad yeah, on your roof? Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah. We had a long commute. How far? 14 minutes. 14 minutes. But you know, in this Wilmington traffic. Yep. We got to oh. cut that down. Six with a copter. Ugh. Six with a copter. Yeah, then we have to take the Uber from the copter pad. The copter oh, from just... from copter to copter, yeah. The yeah, copter yeah. just... I mean, imagine that thing taking off in the neighborhood, just annihilating everybody's yards. Just... You never uh, used your phrase during this story. Oh, uh, under the blades. I'm proud of you. Because... And surprised. It doesn't fit in this in this one, man. Like, I'm not being chased. I'm actually inside of it. Therefore, I think it takes away my street cred. You're still under When the I'm under the blades... No, I'm running from something. I know, but if you're inside it, you're technically under the blades as well. Yeah, but not in a cool way. Sure. That's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying to you. Not th- That's not in a cool way. Under the blades is, hey, man, I'm running with, you know packages of, of marijuana out of the woods or something like that, then you're under the blades and you're on the run. This right. is, eh, we'll stop the blades for you. Sure. You, you can hop on in. You know, sure. And then we'll take off. Sure. Uh, there's nothing that I need to to really be uh, under the blades for this one, right? Not if you own the goddamn copter. Uh, own a goddamn mattress, Jabes. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today and get yourself a mattress. Woo! 
Uh, 36 months, pay as you go program. No interest. That comes out to about 38 bucks in a lot of these instances. And how do you beat that deal? Yeah. How do you beat it? I, I confirmed with Ghostbed too. I was like, hey man, is this real? Because a bunch of users like hit me up. you're still doing it? They're like, yeah. Well, no, a bunch of users hit me up and said it was about 38 bucks. And I was like, I just wanted to confirm with them before I talked about it on air. I was like, right. is it? Because that seems really low. And yeah. they were like, no, it's, that's what it is. And I was like, shit. Um, Anywho, big fan. Big fan of ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. The pillows are the best, man, on the planet. The sheets, the adjustable bases. They're running massive Halloween deals, they said, and massive um, Black Friday deals for Thanksgiving. So, so keep an eye out for that. Any I think, Columbus Day deals? No, no, because it's indigenous people and they don't sleep in beds or mattresses, right? Well, I still say Columbus Day. Okay. Well, it's indigenous people now, so it's teepees and just hard, hard mud mm. that you're sleeping on. Mm. But uh, if it was Columbus Day, yeah, you'd be sleeping on a mattress for sure. For sure. Christopher Columbus loved one thing, and that was luxury. So, yeah, you would have a Other ghost Other people's bed. luxury. For sure. So, I would imagine the, the Halloween deal is for, obviously, the ghost. Ooh. Sleeps so good, it's scary. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. Get in on your deals. They might even be up by now, uh, actually, these Halloween deals. So, peep out. Peep out the site. Let me know. Uh, next up, we got strikeforceenergy.com. <laughs> Boom, boom, boom. Shabloinkers. Shabloinkers. Um, look, they just sent in the new bottles, by the way. Here are the 750 milliliter bottles. Uh, Those look neat. Real nice. They look nice. They switched over to plastic, which was smart, because Very. when people get drunk, start knocking this shit over. Uh, it's really nice. I'm going to hold these up to camera for you right here. Uh, this is the orange. Um, they've, they've got them in all the flavors now, so that's nice. They were, they were only doing original for a while, um, but now they got them in all four flavors. Um, which is amazing. I have a feeling you're going to see be seeing these in a lot of bars soon. And then you have the little things right there that that come with it. Yeah, yeah, it the comes pumps. with the uh, the pumps. So it's not like you're just dumping it out. You actually just put the pump in, and boom, you're good to go. Pump and dump. Pump and dump, <laughs> dude. Yeah. So get get those now. You can put those behind your bars at your house. But I'm I'm sure these are going to be at bars across the country soon. Because uh, once you get in on it. Truthfully, a vodka soda with any one of these flavors, boom, you're good to go. Like, just give me two squirts of that. That way you're not pumping in fucking Red Bull or Monster or whatever that other shit is. So, dude, this is the future, I think. Um, now that they switched to plastic bottles, it's going to be easier to ship for those guys. Yeah. Uh, big fan, man. Zero carbs, zero sugars, last longer than five-hour energy. Ten-pack. Oh, here's the 40-pack, too, by the way. I, I always talk about it on the show. So when my shipment arrived, Jesse... Yes. Um, I was like, dude, I'm just going to bring it in. Here's the 40 pack because we just get one of these a month. You know, we have for what, four years at this point. Mm -hmm. So I, I know the 10 packs have always been on the desk, but here's the 40 pack. So it's like, boom. And it's the same one you get in the stores at like 7-Eleven. They just yeah. ship it to you. Yeah. So you can pop it open and it's not making a mess or anything like that. So uh, stoked. Stoked about it, man. Uh, go to strikeforceenergy.com today. And uh, use the promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off. There's promo a subscription code. of the month, and they ship everywhere in the entire world. Last but not least, James, we got straightrazors.com. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. <sighs> oh, you right? There we go. Uh, wow, you really went for it today. Uh, uh, oh, God. Uh, Oh. You almost killed Jamie today with that one. You what? You almost killed him with that one today. He knows better. But I like your enthusiasm. It's real nice. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Real thanks. sexy. Um, Straightrazors.com is everything you need to be a real man in this life. Mustache waxes. I'm going to use that soon. You, you want me to grow a mustache. I want to confirm this for the audience. Yes. Okay, great. Because I don't want to grow it and then take heed of like, Jesse's going to hate you now. You've personally asked for this because you enjoy a mustache. Right. And you want the handlebars, right? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to do that. I will be using the mustache wax very soon. I'll probably do it after Halloween. Yeah. Um, when do you have to start growing it, though? You know, for me, I think it's a two-week thing. Okay. When do you want me to start it? Just, I guess, uh, after New York. 
Oh, all right. Yeah, so that's... I don't like a half stash, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Maybe I could fucking... If if you want me to do it after New York, then maybe I could be Minshew for uh, Halloween. What's that? Gardner Minshew, the greatest quarter, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. looking sorry, quarterback sorry, sorry. in the NFL sorry, right sorry, now. Sorry, yeah. Sorry, 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 sorry. Maybe I could Minshew it for. There uh, you go. For Halloween, that would be great. Burr. That's uh, that's about the time I need for something like that. I think. Yeah. So yeah, we'll be good to go. Yeah. We'll be good to go, and then we have some events in November, but they actually mustache would look great that for those would events. work actually yeah we can't mm-hmm. say what that is but uh that would actually work for all of that so blamo blamo yeah I, i'm down i'm down for sure okay uh, so i'll be getting the mustache wax uh they got beard oils um conditioners fucking shaving soaps creams everything the straight razors are second to none man and uh, if you're worried about using a straight razor they got safety razors and that's a real clean shave so I look like this. So baby, baby, fresh, smooth, you know, mm-hmm. never aging, aging backwards. So age backwards, straight razors.com promo code revolution, 20% off. And dude, their kits are lights out. Um, before we came on air, so usually we'll, you and I will write like topics and things we want to talk about mm-hmm. and all this stuff before the show. Sometimes we get lucky where, you know, there's breaking news, um, that things happen or there's like wild shit that comes out where you're like, Oh, let's talk about that. Um, Pitchfork, which, which kind of bills itself as the, uh, I don't want to say the new Rolling Stone, but kind of like the, the cooler, hipper Rolling Stone. Like we don't fucking subscribe to anything. Um, they came out with a list of, uh, the best songs of the 2010s. And I was like, I try to think to myself, I was like, why would I'm listening? Yeah. So I was like, why would they do this now? And then I was like, oh shit, it is we're out of the 2010s here in two months. Like, that's it. Yeah. This is another decade that's gone. And I was like, it's weird to think about because we don't really have a name for this decade. You know? That was the aughts. Oh, the name for the decade? Yeah. Like, the, I guess the 2000s is like the 2000 through 2010. But what do you call the, the teens? What do you call the 2010 through? Isn't it the aughts? I don't know. Okay. I, I've never heard it, and it's oh, never okay. stuck. Whatever it is, so well, I've heard if you the have to like question it, the odds, but I didn't know if that's from two thousand on or from two thousand ten on. Do you know what I mean? So huh. I've heard it called the odds, like the late odds, whatever. But I didn't know if that was after the ten, two thousand ten. Okay. okay. So what we're gonna do? I'm gonna read you number two hundred, just so you know where where they're starting with. Okay. Okay. And then before I get down to, maybe we'll roll through top twenty. You want to do top twenty? Sure. Okay. Number 200 is a song that's near and dear to my heart that I love. And if this is 200, and by the way, we have not looked at this list. Um, This is the first time I am going to scroll live on air. We have not seen it, you Mm -hmm. or I, so we we have no idea what what the top 20 is. But 200 is what I'll start with, and it's Levels by Avicii. Okay. If that's 200... I can't wait to see the rest of this list right, because right. to me that deserved to be a lot higher. Right. A lot goddamn higher. You know mm. levels by mm. Avicii mm. gets me off. Gets you going, gets you ready to party. Yeah, I get off on it. Oh, sometimes I get to go Yeah. When that fucking beat drops dude i lose you and your all of the shit inside of my body it is sorority sisters go bowel nah. evacuation no it's not that because that was like not only was that the ultimate club song to which you're dropping ecstasy to but that's a massive workout song where you're just like yeah fuck you and mm-hmm. if the, if it happens to come on in the car on accident mm-hmm. you will be careful to rip anyone the knob else off your driving radio. around yeah. you yeah oh big big fan of that stuff so that's 200 i don't know what the top 20 has in store for us because that is a monstrous song at the end of your list okay um uh so let's let's scroll down here and get to the the top 20 oh all right number 20 m83 midnight city there you go yes now we're talking 100 percent. now we're talking man i absolutely love m83 i've seen them probably five or six times in concerts. I don't know what happened to them. They made two albums that were back-to-back, goddamn near perfection. Mm-hmm. You have heard their music. If you're, if you're at home and saying, I don't know who M83 is, or I don't know Midnight City, you actually do. 
their music is in every single movie you've seen for the last 10 years or car commercial or anything, right? Wouldn't you say that's fair? Yeah. To the point where I think they were asking like, because I tried to get one of their songs. I believe it was Midnight City. Um, yeah, it was 2011. Yeah, it was, was uh, 50K and a Call Girl. I, it, they were asking like 75 grand a track um, because that's how many people were using it for film and TV. Mm. And that is sometimes a deciding factor where you're just like, oh shit, this band has exploded and everybody and their mother's trying to use this. So yeah, man, I'm, I am definitely way into this. I, it, my only disappointment with M83 is they put out an album after that and it was called like the garbage album or something like that. Mm -hmm. And they build it as kind of like Miss Max tracks. We're not a doing the same unit. You know, we're just going to make a bunch of different music and it was terrible. I don't know if they just disappeared or broke up or whatever after that. Um, but when this song was huge, holy shit, dude, this was incredible. Uh, number 19, Vampire Weekend, Hannah Hunt. Okay. I like Vampire Weekend. You do. You, you personally love Vampire yes, Weekend. Yes. I'm not yes, so yes. much on the Vampire Weekend train. I get it while they were big. Um, why why they were why they're big yeah, and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. So uh, this was 2013. So I, yeah, I'm I'm fine with that. Everybody, there's a lot of people that love Vampire Weekend. Yeah. Um, oof. 18. Kanye West Runaway. That could be my number one yep. actually. Yeah, that could be my number one of all of the 2010s. So good. that it was a nine minute version that is the creepiest, sonically most amazing song with very few with the with that keep that just that one piano key at the beginning for Oof. 30 seconds. And then this is Pusha T. This was the birth of Pusha T also yeah. um, in 2010. This this actually might be my number one, but I'm glad it's in the top 20. Um, big, big fan of that. Uh, 17, Jamie XX, gosh. I don't know if I know this one, actually. I don't know this, man. I don't know that song, actually. Um, I'm su actually surprised by that. So I'm going to have to look this one up. I'm not going to, I can't, I'm really surprised I don't know this. So I'll, I'll look it up afterwards. Um, I'm going to listen to that at the gym this afternoon, we'll figure it out. Uh, next up, number 16, the 1975. Love it if we made it. Um, that was in 2018. Man, I, I've got a lot of friends who this is their favorite band. Yeah. So I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. um, 15, Rihanna, work, 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 work. Uh, it was a song. It was a hit song and it was huge. Do was I think it? it deserves to be top 20? No. No. Rihanna had no. a million songs and... That's that's not my one of my favorites of hers. It's just one <laughs> word. It's one word over and over again. Yeah, yeah. You could have yeah. put a million Rihanna songs in there. Yeah. Uh, number fourteen, Angel Olsen, "Shut Up and Kiss Me." Um, mm. Sure. I look. I, I liked it. Not didn't tear my dick off. Um, that's uh, that's a big one. Number thirteen, Chief Keef. I don't like it. Featuring Lil Reese. I don't agree with that. Um, Chief Keefe was just okay to me. Uh, not, not for number 13, though, bro. Especially ahead of Kanye. Uh, number 12, Sky Fiera. Everything is embarrassing. Guy Fieri? Yeah. Could you imagine? Could you imagine he Guy Fieri? He needs to come out with a song. He does. Flavor Town. Um, yeah, yeah this, is a, this is a pretty good song. This is a high rating for me, though. Uh, and especially when you're starting, you started off with a bang here. Uh, Bill Callahan, number 11, riding for the feeling. All right. Still not real. You're kind of dipping on me here. Number mm -hmm. 10, Lil Uzi Vert, XO Tour Life 3. Nope. Nope. Now you're starting to. Sorry, Pitchfork. Now you're starting, starting to, lose to piss me. me off. All now, right. Now I'm starting to get angry about it. Yeah. Um, all right. Now I'm getting happy again. Okay. Now I'm getting a uh, little wood. So for Lil Uzi Vert, I'm starting to get a little wood with uh, number nine, Lana Del Rey, Video Games. Obby. Excellent song. Obby. Uh, Lana Del Rey is fucking phenomenal. This song in particular is... She top 10, though? Lights out. This song, yes, at number nine, I'm okay, fine with okay, that. Okay, okay, Yeah, yeah. This is number nine. Yeah. yeah. Um, Solange, number eight, Cranes in the Sky. Nope. <sighs> this is actually a really interesting 
crazy weird album. Um, and I do like this song. However, number eight is a little high for me. Uh, she did some wild shit on that album though. And I'd say if you were going overall albums, like your top 200 albums, that the, the entire album would be in there. I don't know about this song at eight though. Yeah. Um, but it is good. That album is good. Uh, number seven, Mitski, your best American girl. I don't know this. I don't know this one actually. Do you? Mm-mm, no. This was in 2016. Huh. She appears to be Asian. Or some, I, I don't know. I, I'll play that one. I'll play that one. Number six, Azalea Banks, 212. Yes, as crazy as Azalea Banks is, and look, I don't think she had a hit after this. Right. This 212 song was an absolute fucking banger, dude. How, how's it banger. go? Banger. How's it go? Uh, it kind of reminds me of, um, do you remember Peekaboo by, uh, God, it's an old 80s track, um, Susie and the Banshees? Yeah. It's a very Susie and the Banshees type beat. Um, and everybody in the two one two. I mean, it's this song is was fucking rad, dude. And this, ever after I remember after this song dropped, this was two thousand eleven. Everybody was blaring this, and this was supposed to be the next big thing. And then, I mean, she was dating like Elon Musk and shit after this. Oh yeah. I don't know if you remember any of that. And then she fucking full on lost her her mind, like started getting thrown out of concerts and all this other shit. But oh. this was, hey man, there is going to be a new fucking queen in town. Right. This song was an absolute banger, dude. And uh, I thought she was going to be massive after this. And uh, it, it was like she had CTE or something. Like something was wrong inside of her head. Um, but yeah. Eesh. She's the one that said that um, Elon Musk trapped her in the mansion. Locked all the doors and like a panic room and all that other shit. I thought that was Grimes. No, she, she, he's dating Grimes right now. Okay, and then this was the other girl. Correct. Got it, got yes, it, got yes, it, got yes. It, the it, rapper it, who was it, trapped it, inside yep, the Elon yep, Musk yep, house. Yep, yep, it's yep. her. And then she was the one who went scorched earth on social media and said, all he does is take mushrooms and acid all day and microdose and all this other shit, which I don't know if any of it's true or not because she's crazy, but it also didn't sound that, that too far fetched, but. Yeah. She was supposed to be it. Uh, Frank Ocean, number five, thinking about you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, man. I get down on Frank Ocean. Um, he's got some wild fucking albums, dude. And uh, yes, I, 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 can, I can easily put this in there. He was... He still is, man. He's on another planet. And he's, he's one of those dudes who can put out an album every five years and nobody bitches. They're just grateful to have new music from Frank Ocean. Um, he's done a lot of shit with Kanye, uh, a lot of shit with Tyler, the creator. Um, you know, he was in that whole group uh, for a long time. Uh, we saw him at Coachella. Uh, great singer. Uh, yes, absolutely. Throw on some Frank Ocean. A lot of people make babies for Frank Ocean, too. A lot of pregnancies were, were uh, created from this song in particular back in the day. So I'm, I'm with that. Uh, Beyonce, number four, Formation. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Th- that was a crazy, weird, brand new sound for her. And uh, this thing was mega. Yeah, it was a great song. Mega, mega, mega. Um, yeah, I'm fine with that at four. Uh, man, not this one, though. Number three. Robin, dancing on my own. I've never. Oh, hells yeah. Oh, you you like it? <laughs> yeah. Really? Yes. And it is. Uh, yeah, it's an anthem for sure. It is. I just. It's I guess I've girl, never gotten it's a down girl on anthem. Robin. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It's a girl anthem. I've never gotten down on Robin. So. Hmm. So you're 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 okay with that at yeah, three? The yeah. song came out in 2010. Yeah. Okay. Um. Number two, it's Grimes. We just talked about her. Oblivion. <sighs> this was 2012. I remember this album. Um, it is a good album. Not great. This song does not deserve to be number two, but it is a very good album. And uh, she is an interesting, weird, eclectic artist who 
if you have seen a live show, it is super fascinating. I've, I would say M83 kind of does similar elements. However, Grimes does it all herself. She's one of those people who plays every instrument and records it in real time and then you can hear it back and it's uh and she sings with it she's crazy talented um yeah but like lord is 129 like to me that feels like grimes is two yeah this seems a little too lord is 129 insider for yeah i'm a little bit it's almost like elon musk made the list himself maybe two of his gals are uh yeah right both are in the top 10 um, I'm cu- now I'm curious if, is if a woman wrote this article because this, there's a lot of women in there as well. Yeah. Um, and this is, look, if you don't know that she's dating Elon Musk, do you, let me ask you, do you personally know who Grimes is? No. I, the only reason I do is she opened up for a couple bands that I saw and I was like, oh shit, who is this? Um, and that was it. And they were weird bands, man. Like. I'm trying to think. I think one was M83. I think she opened up for, for M83. So, I, yeah, man, I, this is too insider for me. It's good. It's just not what she's doing is, is revolutionary, but uh, I, no, I can't Bieber, get behind Bieber, sorry, is 120. Come on. That's, uh, get Grimes out of that fucking yeah. bump, some, bump some songs up to the top. Yeah. Uh, number one is Kendrick Lamar. All right. Um, oh. I love Kendrick Lamar. Sure. Um, I don't know if All Right is his best song of this decade. He said so many that it's like. Yeah, it's an interesting one. But uh, how many of them have been after? That was not my favorite of his. And he's, look, I love Kendrick Lamar, and he's got some bangers, dude. I just don't know that that's the one out of all of the his music over the last 10 years. This was a little more mainstream than, you know, and they this was the first single off this album, and they led with it. I remember it very vividly. There is, there is other Kendrick Lamar songs that could have been number one, and he could be number one of this, but... Uh, Drake, Hotline. Nah, eh, that's kind of a boring song. What, what number do they have that at? Um, late hundreds. Yeah. Uh, look, these are hit and miss. Who wrote it, though, is the question. What? Who wrote the list? Or I wonder if it was all of them at Pitchfork combined that just got into this. Because that would make Did more you like sense. DNA more than? Yes. Oh, 100% I like that's DNA That's 105. More. I, I would have fl- flopped those Flipped out. Flipped them. Flop. There's Dumb. another one because I have a I have a huge playlist full of Kendrick Lamar. Um, there's a bunch of them that I'm just like, ba ding 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 ding. That song like, um, <laughs> all I want is a fame and fuck the power. Like that song could have been one to me, and I would have been fine with that. Right. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. I don't know, man. I think the hardest part about this is look, you're gonna take some heat no matter what. I remember reading Rolling Stones, like, top. Okay, so this just says by Pitchfork, so that means it was okay. all, all in, everybody involved in this. Right. Um, but I remember when Rolling Stone tried to do this, like, top guitarist of all time or top, you know, rock groups of all time. You're, you'll ne- no one will ever be happy because music is, is subjective. Sure. But to me, No. I mean, if you're going best of the 2010s, though, like, you have to go a little bit on numbers, right? I mean, it's a curated list. It but is, come but on, like, like, I'll, like bon, bon Iver, I would have put him top 10 just because I haven't heard an artist like that. And, like, you could throw Skinny Love in there real quick. Yeah. And been like, yes, that was a top 10 fucking song that everybody knew and... uh and ch- kind of changed the game in, as far as that realm went. I mean, he's doing, right now, Boney Vare, by the way, because he's got a new album out right now. Um, I haven't listened to it yet because he did something different with it where he was dropping one track a week for mm. like 12 weeks. For, but wasn't the new song like amazing? Both. I heard the first yeah. two songs. They were both amazing. However, 
I didn't want to wait 10 weeks for the rest of the album to come out. I was like, yo, I'll just catch this when you're done. They just wrapped up, and now he's on a tour. He's doing arenas now. He's doing Barclays Center in Brooklyn, and it's just like, shit. For a guy yeah, with a guitar. Yeah, it's still Brooklyn. Y- yes, but for a guy with a guitar to play uh, arena shows. He has a band. They, it's very small, and it's very... When you go to his show, there's just one spotlight on him, and that's it. And he, sometimes he plays in the dark half of the show. Right, been, but he, I know, but he has a full band with him, always horns, like He piano, does, but like, to me, when I think of arena shows, I think of rock groups, Beyonce, Taylor right. Swift, Stones. I don't think of one shriveled up guy with a guitar who's writing broken hearted love songs in a ice fishing house in Wisconsin. Right. So the fact that he is selling out arenas is pretty, pretty crazy. Um, if I'm looking at all this, I would have put, uh, I would have put runaway at one Kanye's runaway for me. That's the song that I've listened to 58 million times. Yeah. Uh, I would have put Florence and the machine in the top 10. For sure. For sure. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I, I mean, she can sing the fucking face off of people. So that would have been a top tenor to me. Uh, I would have put Adele in there, man. Yeah. All of Adele's music came out, you know, Rolling in the Deep was 2011. How <sighs> do you not stick hello in there at least? Or Rolling in the Deep. I, shit. I, I mean, how do you not stick that in the top ten? Right. Um, that that seems a little much for me, um, because there, there's a difference. Like, and I and I can understand if you're trying to say, "Hey, man, these are these artists are too big and too world round." No, it's like no, they put the best music out. They put the best songs and hits out. Um, Odd Future was the name of that band that Frank Ocean was in with uh, mm, yes. Tyler the Creator and all those yes. guys. Yes. Um, for years, but. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, there's there's a lot more than than that. I mean, they threw Miley Cyrus on this list, Wrecking Ball at 152. Yeah, but I that makes sense. It's a good it's a good song. I mean, it, like you know, 152. Dude, <laughs> you just have to think about how it uh, came into the was more than a song, right? Right. Goes into memes and just everyone singing it sure or random things parodies every single person knows lord, that song lord you could have put way in up the top 20 man uh, there's a million songs to choose from from her royals just say you just put royals her, her you know coming out party with that song that's what i mean she was at 129 yeah you could have put her top 20 easily for even the new album was great um, so that's low to me. Uh, Childish Gambino, I'm surprised, isn't up there for This Is America. Mm. That was the first song to win a fucking Grammy, for Christ's sakes, for a rap artist. Um, that could have, you could have put that up there. Um, okay. Yeah. Super interesting. I could go yeah. through this for fucking ever, by the way. Yeah, but then we're so just looking at the internet. And people don't really want exactly, that. Exactly. Um, I, I, I'm super fascinated by all of this and everybody's choices. Um, again, music is very subjective. Right. Probably be the same thing with me in comedy where, to me, there is such a clear cut number one and two in this world that I'm like. Gallagher, I know. Me too. Nope, not Gallagher. The Gallagher and his brother. Yeah, one and two. One and two Zs. If, the twin. If, if we're in a conversation, like mm-hmm. if, I, if they had asked me to write this article about, about comedians, right? Mm-hmm top 10 comedians of the 10 or the fucking top 200 of the goddamn aughts aughts if we're going to call it that the 2010s <laughs> if you disagree with dave Chappelle, we're not friends and i we will never be friends in this life at one i am sorry about everything that has happened to you or whatever you're going through but it is a clear-cut choice of dave, Ch- dave Chappelle at number one mm-hmm. to me um number two I'm going hard and aggressive on bill burr as yeah. number two, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those yeah. are the onesie twosies of it for me. And uh, if if you don't agree with that, again, we really can't be friends in this lifetime. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas music is more subjective, I think. Mine's Carrot Top, Jeff yep. Dunham, yep, Gallagher, Gallagher, and his brother, his identical twin brother, and his twin brother, twin brother. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, one person what wasn't on here is Rod Stewart, Jabes. 
on the top 10? Yeah, yeah. Did he have a new song in the ops? Come on. He's, he's had like nine Christmas albums, I feel oh, like. Oh, so, um, yeah. But he did show up at a, a couple's wedding ceremony in Vegas and sang, which was pretty fucking rad. Was he paid? No, I think he's doing a residency in Vegas and then just and did just, it. Just like showed up. Be, how, how amazing would that be? Who would you want to show up? Spin doctors. <laughs> Obviously. Um, or blur. If it was my. If, Woohoo! If it was. Oh, God. <laughs> could you imagine you walking down the aisle? To, I would <laughs> die. Would that not be the best present for me? Spin doctors, two prints, or blur. Woohoo. Man, no. <laughs> it would be. I'm no. telling you it would be. So what would be yours? Somebody just showed up at random and sang like that? Yeah. Um, I would, I, so I, you would want to go with best overall voice, I think. Right? No, you want to go with the person that's like, holy shit. Hey. Well, here's the thing. I love the Rolling Stones and Mick Jagger. Could he just pop out in a, in a coup version of something now, like on the, on the beach or whatever? Maybe, maybe. Um, but if you heard Adele sing, if it was, if it was Adele, mm-hmm. dude, you're getting Adele. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, and, for the wedding? Yeah, and she just sure. dropped on, hello? Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. That would be pretty incredible. So not if Blur just drops into... Woohoo! <laughs> no. And when I feel every bad, uh, woohoo! The funniest song would be that. Okay. But Adele walking in without you knowing. Yep. Perfect pitch singing hello. Yes. Tears immediately. Obviously, we all know that. Yes. If that, Adele that would popped be... out anywhere saying that, I mm-hmm. cry. Yes. Yeah. I think so, that would be the go-to, right? Yeah, for sure. And, and again, even though the Stones are my end-all, be-all, as far as voice quality of what would be just like chills down your spine, you'd be like, whoa, that's Adele, dude. Right. But I think part of this is like they come and they're hanging out. So it's like Rod Stewart seems like he could fucking party. And oh, yeah. you're like, hell yeah. I think Adele parties though. Yeah. So Adele, that's why I'm saying like Rolling Stones. It's like they would need to go back to bed. Now, it was, eat their now chicken, if you were looking to party some, with chicken, somebody yeah. at, the, at the wedding, then yeah, Keith Richards, obviously. Like, hey, let's obviously, really get shit kicked yeah, off yeah, if you're just yeah. partying with someone. Sure. But. If you're asking someone to sing a song at your wedding, yeah, I'd go, I'd go Adele. Mm, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I, am I crazy on that one? No, She's... you're not crazy. I'm just thinking about the whole scenario where uh, they didn't ask him to. What if they were like hated him? Oh, uh, could you imagine? Because there and is people that like, do. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I think if it was you and Paul McCartney showed up, you'd be like, get the fuck Get him out. out. Get him out. Get him out. And we're good. Just... I'll just be like, we're good. It's a closed ceremony like that. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Yeah. And he just wanted to sing Hey Jude. Mm-mm. Oh, Mm-mm. Like at a piano. Him and Ringo. We all live nope. in it. No, yep. not Ringo. I, like, I wouldn't be cool with Ringo showing up. But, oh, but. but ball, yeah. Ball. I, that would be, I'd, I'd still be in for that. I'd be rad. <laughs> uh, that, that would be rad. You know, just a billionaire showing up. I'm sorry. It. No, we're having a wedding here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Security. Um, by the way, I know we were talking about Drake on that last, that, on that list. Um, they just had the inside of his house on TMZ last night. The inside of. He's been building this crazy mansion in uh, Toronto forever. Mm-hmm. And it's finally done. There is a toilet that sings in his house. Um, Ah, Jamie just popped in and said, uh, with the Rod Stewart thing, the wedding planner died. Vegas found out about it and made the wedding happen. And they made it happen with Rod Stewart. Holy shit. The wedding planner died. Man, I'm, I'm sure that's why that's that was left out of that story. Very tragic. Yeah. Yeah. Yeesh. Ooh. Yikes. Oh my gosh, can you imagine? Jamie, I don't even know if I wanted to know that. Yeah. Now, yeah, Rod Stewart should have fucking showed up then. You bet. That was like, <laughs> should have been fucking Rod, Cher, J-Lo. Yeah. All, everybody in Everyone Vegas. Everyone that has a residency should, be, should have been kids. there. Yeah. Ugh. But the thing is like, you I thought have, Rod Stewart, the way they pitched this online the was wedding. just like, Rod Stewart just crashed this wedding and it was all fun and games. Nope. Right. Wedding of course, they wanted, they wanted a feel-good story. 
And they, and they, and they probably would have got one. Our audience would have got one. If Jamie hadn't popped in with that. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. We oh, yeah. Hey, man, by the hey, way. Hey, by the way, dude. Wedding planner died. That so. nice story? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Not so nice at all. Well, you feel you want to feel happy on your drive? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. We're going to rip mm-hmm. away all your happiness now and just say that wedding the wedding planner, planner died. Dead. They had to go through with it still, obviously, because they're not going to stop the wedding just yep. because the wedding planner died. No. But it feels weird, I'm sure. Creepy to as do. well. Yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, Yippers. Uh, uh. Um, what well, I was talking about Drake uh, before Jamie ran in with that uh, horrific news. And he has no assistant, right? Yeah. No secretary. Drake um, finally built that fucking house, and he's got a toilet that plays soothing music when you're taking a shit. Finally built what fucking house? He's been building this house in Toronto for like nine years. Okay. This mansion. Sorry. This palatial so. thing. It's got a full court basketball in it that is dope as shit it's amazing right it's everything you think drake would spend money on he owns a fucking plane at this point sure. his house is gonna be awesome sure the toilet like it dims out with lights kind of like a virgin flight remember those virgin okay, flights yes, like yes pink yes, and purple lights yeah. that are very soothing and then when you sit down mm-hmm. it plays soothing music for you i don't know that that's necessary like, but soothing like like, like Sade. Blur? Oh, okay. Nope, not Blur. Um, Definitely not. Woo! <laughs> as soon as you sit down. As it flushes? Yeah. Woo! Nice. Um, I don't need it. Do you need it? I don't need it. I don't need it, but if you can afford it, why not do it, I guess? I guess you I could think answer uh, a lot of questions I, that way. I looked at the toilet, too, and it was a really nice toilet. Sure. Really nice toilet. Very deep. Uh, deep rim, deep bowl. And uh, yeah, if you can afford something like that, why not? Deep rim and bowl. Yeah. You ever you ever sit down in somebody's toilet and the, the lid? It's very small. Yeah. And yeah. You're just like you're just squeezing all your parts mm-hmm. in to try to get all your parts out. If nothing worse than a small. Squeezing all your parts in to get your parts out? Yeah. You know, I've been on some small toilets where you're just like, I'm a tall guy too, mm-hmm. where you're just like, I'm going to try to fit everything in. And it's like, all of it's a fucking mess. It in what? Yeah, yeah. you yeah. fit your dong in, dude. The dong goes in the toilet. You know that, right? When every time? Yes. When you when, when no, when you're going number two, Jesse. I really did always wonder about that. I'm like, do you pee? No, you don't first? rest it on the toilet lid. No, but do you pee first and then turn around? You don't put your brethren on the toilet. No, no. Lid. But I always thought you like peed first and then turned around. No, you can't control both. Like if you've got to go in there, both are coming out at the same time. <laughs> Uh huh. Therefore, penis, no. I didn't mean I know that, but I'm just always like goes into the I'm bowl. Like, huh? No, you don't do one and then do the other. Gosh, all of it comes out at the same time. All the pee and the poop comes yes, out at the same, same time. time. Therefore, no, it doesn't. Yes, it does. Jamie's shaking his head. Yeah. No, it. No, it doesn't. No, it's a it's a very at fluid sit. First, at the same time, no. Yeah. It, oh, it, it okay. depends on I guess if your fiber intake and stuff like that. Yeah. And like if you're super healthy, like Right. Look, there, there was just, some shit that you put me on that was super healthy and you were just like it evacuates your entire system where you're just like What stuff was that? Um some seed thing back in the day. It was going in like a smoothie. Um Oh, like chia or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever like those things were. Seed, and you were just, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. And you're like, Whoa, that's everything all at once coming out of your body. Oh, okay. And I was okay. like, You're right. You were right. You were correct on that. Right. But uh, yeah, you sit down and you're just like, whoops, that's all of it right there. And that's every time? Not every time. <laughs> it varies. Right. You know, but uh, I'd say it's 50 50 where you're like, all right, cool. Okay. Um, yeah, I would maybe. Go and I'm not to talking about like a heavy probably, stream yeah. of pee. I'm just talking about light streams of like, all right, cool. You kind of mix and match it, you know? Light streams of pee. pee yeah. You go back and forth. So it'll pee a little bit and then poop yes. and then pee. Yep. <laughs> that's not true that is true therefore you've got to have everything in the toilet you don't just rest your penis on the lid like that's not a thing yeah think about that so you thought all of this time that men I stood up pissed peed and then they go oh i actually have to poop too. nope no that is not a thing in okay. this world so therefore if you have a small toilet seat mm-hmm Congratulations, you're stuffing everything in, you know? Right. 
It's like uh, tucking in a, a dress shirt, you know, with a tie. Like you gotta, oof. Uh -huh. Kind of jam everything in and then pull the tie out, make sure it's the right thing. And right. Same with a small toilet. But this Drake, Drake's. Uh, Jake's looks like. He spared no expense. He's got right. a deep bowl. Deep. Yeah. Uh, wide rim. Mm -hmm, deep mm -hmm, bowl. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So elongated rim, deep bowl. Do you remember the like right. cushioned? Oh, yeah. That was a thing for a while. It was a thing for a while. Thankfully, no longer. I think there's like some bacteria would like. Yes. Stay in there. Because yeah. if, if you pissed on it or anything else. It just wasn't like a hard plastic to wipe. No. There was I, and people pores. did away with that where it was yeah. just like, hey, we're all done with that. If you see somebody that still has it. Yeah. Beware. Yeah. Uh, what's your take on the squatty potty stitch since we're going down this this dark road? What do you mean what's my take on it? Have you ever, you ever used it? science. Uh, no. So I, I did at a uh, friend of mine's house. Um, I had to work there for a couple of months. Uh, I'll just say it was an, an editor of mine. Oh, okay. And, yeah. Uh, and I saw it cause it looks like that little step stool right there. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was against the bowl and he's in a long-term relationship. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that's a decision that you've got to make as a group, obviously of like, Hey, we're going to put this in our house. Right. And, um, so he said it was a better exit and all that stuff. I don't, I'm, t I think I'm too tall for it. Like the legs are too. I didn't really get the 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 results that I desired from that. Uh huh. Because you're, I felt like my my knees were too far into my oh, chest. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. for a mid sized person, like under five ten, mm -hmm. I think it's probably a, a a nice thing. Yeah. But if you're if you're five ten plus, you know, you're starting to get in the sixes. You're too high up there, man. It's like a step stool. I think it needs to be even higher because you're supposed to be in like a squatting position is what it is. Mm. So it puts you into. In the in the commercial, they show animals squatting. Yes. To go to the bathroom yes. and how the intestines like are not pinched in any way. Right. And then it shows a person sitting down on a toilet seat and that it's like pinching a colon, you know, like. Ugh. A tube, nope. an intestine of some kind. Too high. And so if you put your legs up, it goes back into the position of like, let's say, like a dog squatting and right. pooping. No, I'm not down with that. Um, one I would be open to if there was enough room in there is elbows above the rim where you're just facing backwards and you know, just kind of resting on the, mm -hmm. the top of that uh, tank, putting your elbows on the Oh, on the there top you of the go, tank eating and cereal. Just, or just chilling, dude. Like if mm -hmm. you had a straight shot at a TV or something behind you, where you're just like, man, all right, I can get down on that. Right. Because, uh, again, you're all in. You're putting all parts in anyway. So it's like, eh. Yeah, I, un I understand now. Might as well face the other way, uh, Jabes. Uh, last but not least, fucking Zuckerberg, dude. This piece of shit, Mark Zuckerberg, um, came out and said, I, I don't think anyone deserves to be a billionaire. Is you know who says that? Billionaires. Is he a billionaire, yeah. though? He's a fucking multi-billionaire. Multi-billionaire. Uh, and, and he's not wrong. What did but he do? He dumped all his money into some fucking charity that can't yes, be taxed and yeah. only he can get to. If you're not happy about it, bro, you can just give it all away to us and we will be happy to spend I don't think that it's money. that he's not happy about it. I think that the more billionaires we have, the more our distribution of wealth and money gets fucked up. My, me personally, if you worked for it and achieved it, you deserve it. I don't, I don't really care. And even though I hate Zuckerberg, he worked for it and achieved it. I have no problem that he's a fucking billionaire. None whatsoever. Cause that's, you know, what the goal is with any successful company to build a yeah. successful company. Even this media company, I look, I hope we make $1 billion. I would be amped about that. Right. Would I give a lot of way, a lot of way to charity and do some fucked up shit? Yeah, I would. I would. But I w you would never hear me say that I don't deserve that money. If you worked hard enough? No, and, and I, again, it, I don't think he's saying he doesn't deserve it. I think he's saying, as far as distribution of wealth, that it's bad for the economy for a bunch of people to be billionaires. And that's true. Right? Mm. Is it? If you're providing jobs yeah. and you've worked for it, look, you've got to have billionaires out there to hire people. Mm. So... I'm I am all for it, and you've got to have super rich people to hire a bunch uh, hire a bunch of Americans. So yeah, I, yeah. How else are you gonna do it? Yeah, just have everybody kind of moderately moderately rich, 
If you're mono, moderately rich, God, words of fucking it's struggle for me today. One, tough yeah. one for me today. Yeah. If everybody is is in that on the same playing field as far as that goes, mm-hmm. then you're pinching pennies. You're worried about how many people you're going to hire, and maybe you don't try more things, and you know. Whereas Elon Musk, that dude dumps all of his money back into Look, the millionaires, company. I'm all for it. Billionaires, you need them. It's interesting. It's interesting because you just go. You get shit done, though. You get shit built. You get shit made. So, I don't know. You look at Bill Gates and Melinda Gates. They do a lot of crazy, wild shit for charity. Uh, yeah. I mean, they they're they're ones that uh, I th- I think are doing it in the right way. I'm not really sure, but actually using their own money to say uh to s- try and solve the sanitation problem, yeah. which is building toilets and sewage um infrastructure in other countries that are basically getting sick from pooping in their water right so i would say that's a good distribution of it right yeah but there's look there's no moral compass with being a billionaire like the people that get there you can't really choose who they are and i I don't know how you're going to prevent it and or stop it but if you don't get there that means companies haven't become big enough and there's not going to be as many jobs available i don't know one billionaire is just sitting I'm sitting with it all in the for, bank all by himself I'm all for capitalism totally and i'm working for it for sure but it still is crazy to me to think that like on a runway in some like some billionaire owns like five families entire lives And it's probably just in a, it's a jet that's just sitting on a runway. Do you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? And five families could live a comfortable, amazing life. Their entire life. Yeah. With that amount, right? So when you think about it like that, like literally people's entire lives in your bank account, like that's crazy. It's not that he shouldn't have it. He worked really hard for it, but it still is kind of crazy to think about, right? It is. From birth to death, you have an entire person's comfortable life yeah. just sitting in a garage, essentially. Yeah. Because, they, you know, when they have 20 cars and all this fucking shit. Sure. Right? It's weird to think, are they wrong? Did they deserve all of it? Do they get to buy whatever they want with their money? Absolutely. But it still is a little strange. Yeah, it is. But again, if you work for it and get it. Absolutely. Congrats. It's just strange. Yeah. To think about. And it's not going to change. No. So uh, that'll lead us to the revolutionary figure of the day, Jabes, shall we? We shall. Um, This one's going out to Ginger Baker. Uh, He's one of the founding members of Cream. And uh, man, I saw a doc of him. Oh, yeah. Maybe, what was that, three or four years ago um, called Beware of Mr. Baker. Now, look, I know Cream. I've listened to Cream for years obviously and you've everybody's heard it on the radio and Mm. all that shit i was not aware of the drummer of cream and i didn't know about ginger baker and then i watched this doc and i was endlessly fascinated you know i love rock docs yeah and um i did not know how great he was and instrumental during that entire period and like literally everybody was just like he was the best yeah he was the fucking best and and craziest right yeah and they were like look you couldn't stop this guy yeah um so he he did a bunch of weird shit as he got older. In a cool way, he was so into you know being a drummer that uh, he thought that well not thought I mean it's it's on the record that drums came from Africa and that the best musicians and drummers and all that stuff were probably still living in Africa. And he went around for I think like two or three years, man, and just lived there and played drums with all these crazy like tribes and all this nice. other shit. Um, and then, you know, kind of lost his mind when he was older, I guess. But, uh, yeah, when I saw that he Too died, much I was acid like, or something, what was it? I don't know. I mean, look, it, when you start up, when the dark, the, the doc starts off, he's just an angry old pissed off guy. And okay. I don't know why, you know, most people just said that that was kind of his personality and this other shit and, uh, whatever. But, uh, if you get a chance to watch this doc, um, it's amazing, and it, and it kind of tells his life and how he was able to do all this crazy shit. And, uh, and 
most people said he was the best drummer there there was so um who knows um, when i saw that he died i was like shit uh but he was 80 to go that hard in life and then go to 80 that's not bad yeah exactly that's not bad you're at doing all. good so uh shout out to you mr baker yeah fuck um <laughs> you old you old fuck uh watch the doc it'll make sense what i'm saying but if it's still on Netflix, I don't know how many years ago we watched that. I think it must be. They usually take that shit off after oh, like two years. True. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, fun show, Jabes. Yankees game tonight. Blammo. This would make all of your dreams come true. And all of my be... dreams and all my New York dreams will come true. So we'll find out. Uh, for Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I am Ross Patterson. Subscribe on YouTube, and we will be doing some live shows from New York next week. So stay tuned for those as well. Uh, this is the revolution, kids. Good night, everyone. Good night. <laughs>